This film promotes best practice when working with carers, friends and families of people in secure mental health services. Carers, friends and families of people in secure settings are faced with the most unexpected of circumstances. Many people will have had to deal with the police, courts and many other agencies before arriving in secure mental health services. They may have had lots of intrusion into their lives. By the time their loved one is admitted, many people may be traumatised by their experiences. They may also feel isolated by the lack of support. Some will have been affected by their loved one committing a crime or have been a victim of that crime themselves. The very experience of visiting their loved one for the first time and of dealing with the levels of security involved can be distressing. They may be very worried about their loved one. Because of the complicated nature of their situation, carers, friends and families find it hard to get support. They can also feel isolated and uninformed. Each journey into secure services is unique. The impact of having a loved one in secure service should not be underestimated. Everyone's situation is different. Carers, friends and families need to be seen as individuals with their own needs from the outset. It's really important to try to understand their experiences and what support or information they might need. Well, it's been an up and down roller coaster with my son. He's been in and out of hospital off and on for 12 years now. One thing for me when I discovered that my son was here was I did feel that stigma. Nobody really knew, but I felt it myself. I thought, oh, people are going to see me as a really awful person. It's very traumatic seeing your sister going in a police van and going into hospital, especially after we'd been telling them for two years that she'd been unwell. first time that I had to navigate around the system. It was quite, almost like traumatic-like, because there was no one consistent person there to give the guidance that was actually required in terms of what I needed to do and how I needed to do it. And I think it was the lack of kindness, the lack of honest dialogue that brings you down and you almost become faceless and your own self-esteem diminishes. Forensic carers have a lot of different things to deal with that are not easily understood. For example, going to the supermarket to buy a loaf of bread and turning round and finding that your private life is all over the front of the newspaper, for example. He lost the tenancy of his flat and I had to clear that out. I had to go back into that flat and face the trauma of what had happened there with no support. Families need to feel they are involved in the decisions that are made because they are part of the ongoing treatment and care of that person. Asking carers, friends and families for information about their loved one can make them feel valued. It can also help the patient's recovery as they know vital details of their experiences and history. Here are some other approaches that carers say are effective. It's good for me to know that they will listen when I talk about her or when I know she has one of her triggers, that they will respond. I had access to a psychotherapist through my local trust. While he was in a high secure service, I was constantly supported by a social worker from the regional secure unit that he was returned to. I could contact her by email or phone, and it made a big difference. The issue about timely information, clinicians need really to sit you down and have that sensitive talk with you 
and give family that opportunity to ask questions and get fears allayed. And it may not just happen in one session. And then you want to think about, you know, how then do you access any relevant services? Let's take a look at Ashworth's Visitors Centre to see how they're taking carers, friends and families' needs on board. Often our families travel hundreds of miles to come and see their loved one here because there's only three high secure hospitals in the country. The centre's open prior to and following visits. They can access lots of resources, information on the Care Act, information on mental ill health and recovery, and also just have some time to get a drink and have some support. We also facilitate here psychosocial education programme for carers, which are carers' forums with very clear terms of references. A lot of our families may work and so it's important with our forums and things that uh, we, we promote them at weekends and at evenings. The way I work is very much around collaboration with families, working together really. Amanda's very understanding. She's one of the best I've known to get me other people to talk to. Amanda set up the carers group and it's just gone from strength to strength. She has uh, liaised with all the members of staff, consultant psychiatrists, dietitians, pharmacists. It's knowledge and it's so important to know because it allays my fears. Meeting the needs of carers, friends and families is important in secure mental health settings. As well as helping them, it will also benefit the patient, the care team and will help develop and improve services.